Good morning, St. Francis, and good morning, people of God. It is Thursday, the 31st day of October 2024, Thursday of the 30th week of the year, the 30th week of ordinary time. And because it is the 31st of October, it is the eve of all hallows. It is Halloween uh, here at the Franciscan School at the parish of St. Francis of Assisi. I have my Gandalf hat on uh, today because in honor of what today is. Uh, so hopefully um, you're having a wonderful Halloween. Um, it'll be a, a spooky and fun night uh, for you. Um, a fun, a spooky and fun day also, um, if that may be. Uh, so um, uh, as we move into uh, this last day of October, moving more deeply into fall, it does not feel like fall here in Carolina because uh, the heat has come back again. Uh, so it's going to be in its 80s uh, today, I think, and tomorrow. And then uh, it should cool off, I think, uh, over the weekend. A little bit more, come back to fall weather. Uh, so it'll be a little bit of a warm um, a Halloween uh, evening for trick-or-treaters and things like that. So, um, so as we... Um, move into Halloween, as we move into the Eve of All Hallows, uh, we, we hear the last part of the letter to the Ephesians, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, um, because, yeah, it is, it is the last part. I think that there might be a little bit more of it that we would have heard, but uh, because tomorrow is All Saints and Saturday is All Souls and then Sunday is Sunday, we're going to move into the letter to the Philippians, I believe that it is on Monday. So, but, but it's a good place to end this letter to the Ephesians, um, in which, um, uh, Paul again, uh, after you know, giving this whole line about uh, wives in submission and husbands loving wives and slaves obeying their masters and children listening to their parents, after after all this kind of um, admonitions and things like that, uh, Paul then gives that final encouragement uh, that uh, this community of faith that is in this city of Ephesus um, can gain strength through God's spirit um, to be able to face any kind of upheavals, any kind of disturbances, any kinds of things uh, that will rock the world in some way, shape, or form. Um, because again, Christianity is not always going to be embraced by every culture, every people, you know, every, every area. Um, it is something that is totally different from the way uh, people were living and acting. Um, and, and because of that, um, it was seen as a threat. It was seen as something that, you know, was not good uh, for society and for culture um, and for the identity of people. Um, and so again, this, this great uh, prayer and this great hope um, that this church in Ephesus will continue to stand firm uh, because of the power that comes to it from Christ. Again, it's always something for us to consider. You know, it's like, where does our power as believers in the world come from? You know, it doesn't come from ourselves. It doesn't come from our bishops. It doesn't come from our pope. It doesn't even come from our saints. Um, it, it comes from God. Um, and if we forget that, you know, then, then then basically we are running the risk of, you know, misinterpreting what it is that God is asking us to do, what God is asking us to, to live as and be witnesses to. Um, it is that strength and power that comes from God that allows us to see differently. Um, again, we as human beings can only see so far. I mean, we will make decisions that unfortunately only can lead us so far. Um, but with God, there is great hope for us to move ahead um, and for us to continue becoming who it is that God needs us to be in this world, that God wants us to be in this world. Um, that's the reason why have been, we have been created for this world. Um, knowing that our strength and our power lies in God's spirit um, is something that allows us not just to endure life, um, but to persevere, um, to succeed, uh, to achieve. You know, again, what is our standing? What is our goal um, as, as, as this body of believers um, in a world that is sometimes filled with doubt and confusion and all kinds of things like that? Understanding why, um, why things are through the eyes of God or how things can be through the eyes of God is our greatest challenge and our greatest, um, uh, but, but, but our greatest gift uh, to be able to offer to the world. Um, and so we're called to do that, as was the church in Ephesus um, in all times, in all places. In um, uh, Luke's gospel uh, today, um, again, there, there is where, where uh, Jesus uh, becomes again in one of his cagier moments. Again, Herod wants to kill him. Some Pharisees say, and so he should leave Galilee. Um, and you know, and, and Jesus calls Herod that fox. You know, uh, again, there's no great respect for Herod. Um, and in Luke's gospel, during the passion of Jesus, uh, the passion narratives, uh, Herod does interrogate Jesus, um, which is again why it appears in the rock musical Jesus Christ Superstar, where 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 there is that uh, little ballad by Herod about not believing who Jesus. is is and wanting to be shown proof that Jesus is who he says he is. Um, again, 
Herod doesn't like what Jesus is saying, what Jesus is doing, um, and um, unlike John the Baptist, it, it, well, actually, it's a different Herod than John the Baptist, uh, John the Baptist Herod. Uh, John the Baptist Herod liked John, but had no spine, and basically follows his wife's wishes to cut off John's head. Um, this Herod, who is the son of that Herod, uh, basically um, goes ahead and, uh, and, and and tries to eliminate Jesus's influence, you know, from Galilee. Jesus's response to that is always that, you know, again, the prophet does not die except in Jerusalem. So it's again, it's an allusion to his death and then to his crucifixion that will happen. But also carried within this passage is that um, uh, he will be traveling between Galilee and Jerusalem. And the next time that Jerusalem will see him um, is when they proclaim, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So uh, again, anticipating Palm Sunday. Um, again, you know, it's, this is basically just informative narrative. It's, it's nothing, there's no lessons to be learned. Um, you, again, there is the point at which Jesus again cries for Jerusalem um, and asks, you know, uh, that, that Jerusalem should be gathered as a, as a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But Jerusalem refuses as, again, all those uh, who refuse sometimes because what Jesus is offering seems too good to be true. Um, and that is always the thing that we have to worry about. That's the only thing we have, to, we have to warn ourselves about is believing it's all good to be true and therefore not believing it at all. Um, that's not good for us. Um, we must believe it, even if it seems too good to be true. The truth and the reality is it is true. Um, and it is something that can reshape our lives and our world and everything that we experience around us if we but allow it. Um, a lesson we need to learn again and again. And as we move towards the end of our church year, hopefully is a lesson that we take more seriously. A blessed day, St. Francis and people of God. A happy Halloween to you all. May the Lord give you his peace.